start to close your eyes, relax your breathing. I'm just sensing which nostril is more or less dominant this morning. If you can't sense just with the mind, then you can close the nostrils, one finger or the other. And starting with the dominant nostril, three forceful inhales and exhales. Bring the hand to the face. Inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale. And then switch. Inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale. Bring the hand down. Maybe you need to blow the nose. Start to establish your ujjayi. Slow breaths in and out. Bring the palms <clears throat> underneath the nostrils. Namaskar to prana itself. Maybe your breath can be a little bit longer and deeper so that you can feel that touch of air across the fingertips. A reminder of the twin laws of life, which is that mind and breath move together. Exhale, hands in front of the heart. Ayur Mantra. Remembering your deepest purpose for practicing. Mm -hmm. 
aligning it with the highest dharma of life, which is freedom from suffering. And connecting the two through the thread of prana, the breath itself, the healing force that permeates not only your body, but the entire universe. An unbroken web of life, extending from being to being. Good. If you haven't already beginning the Samavritti with Ujjayi, hands can come down. Every time you practice, the breath may feel different, the breath rate may be different in your body. Don't try to force the sameness, but observe first what is possible. Kapalbhati Pranayam. Today we'll do 35 rounds in your favorite hand position, arm position. So hands can be down, hands can reach up, interlaced, or hands can be behind the head, elbows pointing. So whichever position, taking it now. Wherever you are, if the arms are down or up, just feeling the lift of the waist, the bottom ribs away from the abdominal core. Chin down, lengthen the back of the neck. Right, if you have any of the contraindications, pregnant, menstruating, stay here breathing in Ujjayi. Otherwise, with your mind focusing at the soft palate, inhale. Contract the pelvic floor and begin 35 rounds on the exhalation. As you inhale, whenever that is, big breath into the lungs, and as you exhale, relax. Notice the change in the body. Notice the vibrations in the body, what they are telling you. And slowly opening the eyes, taking the hands behind you. You're actually going to step the feet onto the ground, hands behind the hips. Feet can be separated or feet can be together, knees together. Fingers are pointing towards the front. Pressing into the palms, lifting and broadening the fronts of the lungs, chin is down. Staying here as you breathe all the way down into the lower lobes of the lungs and as you empty all the way down into those lower lobes as well. Right, Bring the inner thighs energetically towards one another. If you'd like to, inhale now. Bring the knees forward in space, lift the hips. As you exhale, slowly lower down, right? We're not coming to our maximum in our upward facing table, just enough to start to feel the lower back. So inhale, point the knees forward, lengthen the quadriceps, lifting from the abdomen, sacral region. Exhale, lower down. 
one more time. Inhale, slowly rise up. Lift from the sacrum and exhale, lowering down. Sitting the buttocks down, swing the legs behind you, coming onto hands and knees. Ganesh Mudra. Right, tucking the toes if you need additional support for the rounding of the pelvis. Otherwise, keeping the tops of the toes relaxed on the ground. Walk the hands slightly forward so that you can get that maximal opening in your upward facing dog, Urdhva Mukha Chanasana. As you exhale, let's start clockwise. Bring the hips to the right and down. And as you inhale, to the left and forward. Keep the knees down in Urdhva Mukha Svanasana. Exhale, hips to the right and back. Inhale, hips to the left and forward. Continue at your own pace, right? You'll notice when the <laughs> when you're thinking about a pose or how to do the pose, the head and neck does not integrate with the spine, right? It stays separate. So once you're done figuring out the pose, right? Remember that the <laughs> the neck is a part of the spine. It likes to forget that, right? And bring it right in that communion with the tailbone region, with the sacral region. As the sacrum is moving, the head and neck are responding to that movement, right? There's this kind of wave of sensation that travels up the curves of the spine. Good. Sometimes I feel like I could just do this all morning. Good. And then switching the rotation counterclockwise. Inhale to the right and forward. Exhale to the left and back. And again, just notice if the head has stopped responding to the movement and then bring it back. Good. And then along this spectrum, right, find the place where you really are enjoying and stay there for about two breaths. It could be back to the sides or forward. Good. Wherever you are, come to the neutral place of hands and knees. Tuck your toes. As you exhale, bring your hips back towards the heels with tucked toes. Yeah, a little bit of pressure into the toe mounds. Massaging the soles of the feet. Good, now energize the hands. That means press the hands into the ground. Press the toe mounds into the ground, right? And then see with your inhalation. Begin your inhalation, lift the knees. And then as you exhale, begin to straighten the legs towards Adho Mukha Svanasana. Doesn't have to be absolutely straight legs if it's especially early in the morning. Two breaths here, right? If you like to move the legs, you're welcome to. Otherwise, staying still, observing the flow of breath in your body. And again, these twin laws of life, mind and prana, mind and prana. What is their relationship? Good. As you exhale, bend your knees, lightly step forward to the front of your mat, squat down, round the spine. And then as you inhale, coming into Uttanasana, your forward fold. Hands to the shins. Let's take a little bit lighter. If you're touching the ground always, let's bring the hands up higher so that you can just really relax into the support of the legs. Next inhalation, take the hands to the hips. Rise all the way up. Exhale, arms down by the sides of the body. You're in your Tadasan mountain pose. Observe your heart rate today. 
slightly step the feet apart, wider than hip width for your A&P, Akunchana Prasarana. Bend your knees, hands on the tops of the thighs, fingers pointing in or out, whatever is most comfortable for your wrists. Right, just a standing cat-cow position. As you exhale, round the spine, pull the belly in. A little bit stronger ujjayi breath, especially on the exhalation. As you inhale, relax the abdominal muscles and breathe in. The inhale happens in relaxation. As you exhale, squeeze, 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 massage the abdominal organs in towards the body. As you inhale, relax the belly and breathe in. Good. Exhale, squeeze. Now maybe at the peak of your exhalation, you can contract the pelvic floor as well, just for a moment, as long as you're not on your cycle. And then relax the contraction of the belly and the pelvic floor and breathe in. See if your inhales can be just as smooth. And just continue with your own breath, slowly starting to lengthen the exhalations, right? A little bit more focus on that complete release in the belly as you massage inwards and then the soft inhalation. All of your mind focusing at the Agni Tattva, the fire element in the abdomen. Use your legs, right? Sometimes I like to really squat low, right? And then pull up strongly like a dragon. So that the Agnisara prep, this Akunchana Prasarana, really begins to use every aspect of my physical body. All the joints, all the muscles. Good. Last few breaths now explore a little side to side. So, you know, if you exhale, you squat down, moving from the right foot. Exhale all the breath out, all the way up towards the left shoulder. Inhale to release, and then exhale, moving towards the left foot. Exhale all the way to the right shoulder. So explore the side-to-side -side movements of the sides of the abdomen, the middle movements of the center of the abdomen, whatever you can start to get mastery over this gut region, which is so important. Good. One more. There you go. Very nice. Good. And then your next inhalation, relax, quiet inhale, bring your forearms onto the thighs, interlace the fingers and just relax the head. Observe your heartbeat. Um, some of you have already taken off <laughs> some of your clothes, so it's working. All right, Agnisara starts to heat up the body. Good. And then press the hands into the thighs, rise up, step the feet together or two words together standing in Tadasana. Just observe. When we say we practice with the elements, that means that element becomes predominant in our body. So with the Agni Tattva, the fire element, that's temperature. Feeling the temperature change. Inhale now, take the arms out and up. Interlace the fingers, press up, arc the upper back, gaze up. As you exhale, turn the chin down, holding all the way to the ground. You can separate the fingers and hold on to the big toes. Bend your knees to do so if you need to. As you inhale, straighten the limbs, your elbows and knees to your capacity, look forward. As you exhale, bend your elbows and maybe your knees as well as you fold deeper. Two more times like this. Inhale, right? Straightening the limbs to your capacity, gazing forward. As you exhale, bend the joints. 
last time inhale as you look forward feeling the opening in the back of the body between the shoulder blades and exhale fold stay here hands can keep holding the toes if you like to bring the hands on the shins or in the crooks of the elbows you can we'll be here two breaths wherever you feel stable breathing into the striations of your hamstring muscles that's between the muscles at the backs of the legs right they're like rivers that run from the sacrum down to the feet good next exhalation bend your knees exhale to utkatasan bring your hands behind you Sitting the hips down, crossing the legs, and coming to your pranayama seat. We'll just do a light twist here before you get settled. Inhale, bring the arms up, and exhale, twist to the right, left hand to the right knee, right hand behind you. Right, a version of Bharadvajasana, but in a cross-legged position. Relax any gripping in your hands and wrists. Bring your mind again back to the center of the abdomen, Agni Tattva. Good. Inhale, slowly unwind. Arms can reach up and exhale over to the other side. Your Ujjayi, you know, as you start to come towards the end of the physical movement of the practice, the Ujjayi becomes more more quiet. Mind becomes more and more internal to what is happening and feeling in the body. Good. And then slowly inhale, come back to center. Hands on the thighs, chin slightly down. I guess today is the sun's turn. We're going to be doing Bhastrika. Right, more solar practices today. So really establish your seat. It's very important with Bhastrika that your base is very firm because of the force, because of the vigor of the pranayama, right? If you remember, or maybe if you don't, if it's your first time practicing Bhastrika, definitely take your hand on your abdomen. Bhastrika is a forceful exhalation like Kapal Bhati, but also a forceful inhalation. So you pump the belly out and in. Push the breath out and then push the belly back outwards again as you breathe in. So the breath of Bhastrika is active in both respects, inhale and exhale. If you're on any of those contraindications, you will not practice Bhastrika. Just you can practice Ujjayi or Brahmari B's breath. Good. Now, if you don't have your hand on the abdomen, the hand will remain face down on the thighs or the knees, right? That's to emphasize this pratishtam, your base, your foundation that holds you. We'll do one minute of Bhastrika, three rounds of relaxed breathing in between, and then one more round. Go ahead and breathe in. Contract the pelvic floor, feel your base, and then we begin with that forceful exhalation, forceful inhalation, steady pace for yourself. Focus at the chest region.
Exhale all the breath out. Inhale up the spine. Hold the breath at the soft palate. Relax the shoulders just for a moment, floating. And then exhale, release. Three quiet resting breaths in between. Feeling the changes in your body. Bringing the mind again to focus at the heart center. Remember, Bhastika is the pranayama for the lungs, the heart. Inhale, up the spine. Contract the pelvic floor and exhale to begin. Exhale all the breath out. Inhale up the spine. Light hold. And exhale, release. Soft breathing. No more ujjayi. Observe the inner landscape, the way the sensations feel in your body, what emotions are arising. Slowly start to adjust your breath rate, breathing in for four and out for eight or up to eight. If the heart is beating fast or you feel any discomfort in the chest region, then just relax, relax breathing. Otherwise, slight adjustment in Vishama Vritti, this uneven ratio of one to two breathing. especially on the exhalations, these long, drawn-out, slow exhalations. Feel your mind descending down with the apanavayu, with the downward-flowing prana into the lower recesses of the body. And as you breathe in and bring that prana, the vital energy into the chest, into the lungs, the mind floats back up. So in a way, the mind is traveling up and down this highway of the spine. Integrating the experiences of the lower body with the experiences of the upper body. If it's comfortable for you to extend the exhalation even longer than eight, then please do so. You can try a ratio of five to 10, six to 12 or more, whatever is naturally happening in your body, a natural extension that doesn't cause strain, especially in your inhalation. Right, eventually this 
one to two breathing, the Shamavritti, leads you to the state in between where it really feels like the body is floating. So especially if you lay down and practice this in a yoga nidra and really extend those exhalations, there's a moment of pause, a moment of suspension where the body becomes lighter and lighter and lighter. And the mind enters that space of turiya, or the space beyond waking, dreaming, and deep sleep. So one to two breathing is not a beginner's practice, actually. <laughs> it leads one also to very profound insights and very deep sadhana. Continue for another few breaths or so, feeling that very last trickle of the exhalation. When you feel ready, letting go of this slight control of the breath and just breathing normally letting the breath choose now and observing its natural rate in this moment see if it's true what the sages say does the body feel lighter less encumbered. Bringing the mind to the nostrils, focusing at the touch of prana. Even though the physical breath enters and leaves this, these rims of the nostrils, the prana actually uh, begins, the inhale and exhale of the prana begins way in front of the face. So just explore. As you exhale, <clears throat> see how far your awareness reaches in front of the face. Where is that point from which the exhale turns and becomes the inhale? That point in front of you is your pranic field, your pranamaya kosha. And then inhale, follow the breath up the nostrils to the center of the eyebrows. And then reverse the direction. As you exhale, watch the breath coming down, out through the nostrils. And then somewhere in the space in front of you. As the breath reverses from this point in front of you, all the way in through the nostrils and back inwards. Even if you cannot find that exact point, just the general feeling that there's a energetic pulsation of this pranamaya kosha around you, in front of you, and that is where you draw in the life force from, not the rim of the nostrils. Drawing that life force, the prana, in from the universe itself, surrounding, supporting you. And then just letting go of that exploration. The next time you breathe in, bringing the mind's energies into the heart center. Just resting there. Mm. 
before the day or the rest of your day unfolds, right? Every time you finish a sadhana, it's a marker for a new day. It doesn't matter what time of day you do it, but a marker that you have altered your breath, mind, soul pattern. So in your mind's eye, deep in the heart, observing what lies in front of you. How would you like to shape the destiny of the rest of your day? Seeing it, feeling it, however it occurs to you. and directing that prana that you have generated towards this reality. Good. When you're ready, bringing the palms together at the heart center. Bowing the head if it's not already. Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Tat Sat Exhale, surrender your body to Mother Earth. Inhale to rise. Whenever you arise, that's when you start to bring energy into the palms. And the palms to the face, the eyes. Gentle massage. Right, when we do the Ayur Mantra, we're really thanking the different aspects or senses as well. So the eyes, the ears, the mind, the mouth, what we speak, what we think, all of these things in the space of the head. Good. Slowly bring the hands down, opening the eyes. Very good. Thank you so much, everyone. <laughs>